Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, race number four at Belmont Park on Saturday. One of two graded stakes races on the card. It's the John A. Nehrud, seven-eighths of a mile. $250,000 is the purse, and it features the return of the extremely talented Life is Good. Again, carded is race number four, 234 Eastern, the approximate post time. Fourth of July sale ongoing at drf.com. You're not going to want to miss it. Save up to 50% off select handicapping products. Check out shop. DRF.com. Here's the field for the grade two John A. Nehrud. Life is good. Makes his first start since the Dubai World Cup. He was the big favorite that day, but he had a big question to answer. And that was whether he could get the mile and a quarter. And on that day, he certainly didn't. He made an easy lead. The trip was there for him, and he was very tired the final eighth of a mile. Uh, yeah, he did get really tired in that race. You know, I don't know. I mean, the more I look at that race, Dan, I don't, I, you know, he did get his you know, preferred position up on the early lead. The interior splits of that race, though, I thought they were pretty solid. Um, this horse got pretty tired at the end of this race. I know it was disappointing last time. He's still a really good horse. And uh, listen, the connections are resetting here. They're going to start him back sprinting. They're going to turn him back to a sprint distance. He has been very successful at a mile. Of course, he won the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile last year, and he gave Jackie's Warrior all he could handle going this seven-eighths of a mile in the H. Allen Jerkins at Saratoga last year. We throw up the time form U.S. pace projector, and even though life is good is cutting back in distance, we're expecting him to make the lead. He's just that fast, and that's no knock against Speaker's Corner, who's had a very, very good year, but boy... Poor Speaker's Corner. He caught a beast last time out in flight line, and now he's catching light as good. I guess what Woody Stevens said is true. The the buildings get bigger once you cross the Hudson. Yeah, he's he, he, this is going to be the second time in a row that he's facing. Perhaps, you know, he's going to run into the, you know, for the second time, you know, one of the best horses in training. We'll see um, how he stacks up. This time, he was no match for flight line last time. When he made the lead, I guess he could make the lead here, Dan, but uh, life is good if he breaks from the rail. I just think he's faster. Life is good, of course, from the Pegasus World Cup. Two starts back with a 110 buyer speed figure. We'll talk about him. He's likely to make the lead. What do you feel is his optimal distance, Mike? Seven eighths? Do you think it's a little short? I think probably anything between seven and a mile and an eighth is right within his wheelhouse. He's just that talented, and his speed just gives him a big advantage in many of his races. Yeah, agreed. I mean, I, I don't think seven furlongs is his best distance. I'll say that. Um, I'm sure he's better going longer than this. Um, whether that's up to a mile and a quarter, I guess we'll find out because I, I think he deserves the chance um, to run in some of those better races going longer. Um, so hopefully we'll see him stretch out again over the summer. But we already know that he's good over this distance, Dan. Um, he's a, he's run he won really impressively over a one-turn mile. He ran great off of that long layoff in the Jerkins last year. Um, I don't think the distance is going to get him beat here, but I don't think seven furlongs is what he really wants necessarily. We'll talk about a couple of big price horses before we get to Speaker's Corner. The two is Repo Rocks. This is a horse that has done well going turf to dirt in the past. He'll try it again here. The last time he ran on the main track was the grade three run Happy. He was the beaten favorite that day. The pace was fast and it was run but won by a one run closer drafted who came back to win a stake at Monmouth with an 85 buyer. But boy, Repo Rocks is going to have to run a career best buyer and, and maybe then some. Yeah, he is. He did run a 99 first, uh, first time out for this trainer. Three starts back. That was a good performance. Um, you know, we'll see, Dan. He's placed in a couple of grade threes. I do think he can get a piece of this at the end. I don't think there's any way he's going to beat the two favorites in this race. Um, one, th one thing that's worth, you know, keeping an eye on with Repo Rocks, though, Dan, is he's not always a great gate horse, and he cannot afford any mistakes in here. And he can't break to the left because that would really hurt life is good. The three is Harvard, a horse we haven't seen in about two and a half months. He's returning as a as a new gelding, and I guess he needs it because he just did not get out of first gear in his most recent start. Now, he was facing a fairly promising horse from the Chad Brown Barn. Southern District won that race easily and then came back, and he won a three other than a Churchill with a 101 buyer. Maybe we'll be hearing more from that horse over the summer, but Harvard is another horse. He ran a 92 buyer, first start off the lengthy layoff, and then his form went sour. Yeah, I, I, mean, I just don't know how good this horse is. I mean, I get that, you know, he was in against a good horse last time, Southern District. Prior to that, it was Cato River. Um, he also ran against Dynamic One in the Curlin last year. So he's faced some, you know, pretty good competition, but it's not like he's getting class relief here, Dan. And I don't know, is the cutback supposed to help this horse? 
I'm not sure it's supposed to help this horse. I actually like Harvard going longer distances. To me, a mile and an eighth might be his best. Maybe we'll see him in Saratoga in a race where maybe we can get a price on him. The four is War Toxin, and he took on a free class timeout. Jackie's Warrior in the True North, and he was really game to be third. He was well beaten, but he got up for third at the very end. And this is a horse that just tries hard every time. He's an overachiever, and on occasion, He'll pop into your exotics at a big price. And if you think maybe Speaker's Corner burns himself out going after life is good, you split him with this horse, and maybe you get something to bet on in this race after all. Uh, yeah, maybe. I mean, I guess that was the way to play the Met Mile, right? Um, Speaker's Corner went to the lead. He couldn't hang with flight line, and he got you know nailed for second in that race. I don't know. Maybe it'll happen again here. It's hard for me to look at the race that way. Um, I, you listen, I, I don't have anything bad to say about Wartox, and he shows up and he runs every single time, but he just feels like he's in way too tough once again. And I feel bad because I think we're giving Speaker's Corner a little bit of short shrift. I mean, he's run 10 times in his career. He's earned six triple-digit buyer speed figures, including a whopping 114 in the grade one card to rebeat an okay field. I mean, reinvestment risk is a decent sprinter. Mind control came back to beat Hot Rod Charlie, a horse that finished ahead of life as good in the Dubai World Cup. In the Met Mile, he actually tried to win the race. I mean, he took the race to flight line as one of the better horses we've seen in a very long time, and there's no disgrace in losing to that horse. Yeah, he just was no match in that race. I actually like the ride that Junior Alvarado gave him in there. Once flight line didn't break great, he just went to the lead, and then he actually made things tight on, on flight line early in that race to sort of you know make him take a seat. It didn't work out for Speaker's Corner. I still thought he ran fine in that race. Obviously, his prior form is really, really good. I mean, this is a, a really nice horse. Seven furlongs, maybe it's a better distance for him than it is uh, for Life is Good. Danny's three for three going seven, and he's got a faster race than uh, Life is Good's ever run. And he has the recency advantage. Of course, life is good has not run since Dubai. If you're Jose Ortiz, how do you ride Speaker's Corner? I mean, I would sort of ride him the same way they rode him in the Met. It doesn't mean they have to send him to the lead, but come out of there running and see if you can take advantage. If, if the situation presents itself and if it doesn't, I guess you're going to have to sit off life, life is good and try to gun him down on the stretch. Before we take a look at our top selection, please click the subscribe button on the Daily Racing Forum YouTube channel, Saratoga, Del Mar, right around the corner. Get the latest from DRF TV. We're going to go with Life is Good in here. We're going to chalk it out, and we're going to chalk it out from an exact standpoint. It's going to be the old 1-5 cold punch. I'd like to see Life is Good come back roaring and give Todd lots of options over the summer. I would too. I still think he's, you know, listen, I know flight line has really emerged now, but I still think life is good as one of the best horses in the country. And I'm happy to, that he's back here racing in New York. One, five, two, three for Mike. One, five, four, three for me. It is the John A. Nehrud, one of two graded stakes races at Belmont on Saturday. Best of luck.